Good morning. We are so glad you're with us. I'm Stella Escobedo. Thanks so much for joining us. And I'm Nadia Irabpour filling in for Eric today. Got your forecast covered too. So we'll we'll get through it, guys. <laughs> it's already been one of those mornings like, wow, it's only been 90 minutes we've been on air, but it feels like let's do it. A while. Yeah, <laughs> we got it. All right. So right now, when you step outside, uh, we do have some overcast conditions. You'll see that right here over Del Mar. There's a look at La Berge for the camera at La Berge looking out towards uh, Powerhouse Park right there. A beautiful spot. And I can tell you uh, yesterday I did have the day off, made it to North County, the beach. Wow, it was busy. So uh, you'll likely see that again. Uh, weather will feel pretty comfortable. We do have clouds, but hey, that's not going to deter you right near normal temperatures today. So a lot of 70s from the coast to many inland areas, although low 80s for some of our further inland spots that you go. Chance of thunderstorms in your forecast as well. So that's especially tomorrow over our mountains and then high pressure makes a comeback. You know what that means? The heat will be returning. Jenny. So I don't know if someone's driving around the South County and just throwing stuff out of their car, but we've got a lot of debris that is um, scattered about here. Let me get to the top of my map for you. You can see all those yellow icons. Let's zoom in. On this one, this is the 805 northbound at 43rd. We've got one lane blocked with some sort of debris. 94 traveling eastbound at F Street. Similar story. Third lane is blocked. There is an object in the road. No word on what it is. Very obscure. East on the 94 at Federal, same deal. Junk in the road, block in the lane. But you saw as I was scooting about the map that your travel times there are fine. It's just the Coronado Bridge that's saying just a little bit of an uptick. Hey, good news on the 5 northbound side at Las Pulgas. That crash that was blocking the right-hand shoulder has been cleared. Everything else to the North County is calm. Stella. Jenny, thank you. The search for missing Chula Vista mother Maya Miliete is back in the spotlight today. Now, this morning, a hearing is scheduled over a temporary gun violence restraining order surrounding her husband. News 8's Evan Narani joining us live downtown with what we can expect to happen during this hearing. Good morning, Evan. Good morning, Stella and Netta. That's right. It is a temporary gun violence restraining order, but that judge today at 9 a.m. could decide to make it not so temporary. He could potentially extend that gun violence restraining order by an additional year. He could also grant Larry Miliete those guns back. It is all going to come down to that hearing scheduled for today. It's a closed hearing, so the media will not be present there. It's also unknown as to whether or not Larry Miliete will be appearing in person or via Zoom. However, it is expected to include parts of that 80 page response that Larry Miliete made uh, to say that he deserves to have those guns back. The, the uh, family of Maya Miliete spoke about this gun violence restraining order and why they believe that it should stay in place. The police did their investigation. There's, there's a reasoning behind the guns being taken away and all the search warrants that they served at his house. He is a suspect, you know, with any missing spouse. Um, you know, the spouse is a primary suspect and I did told him that since the beginning. And in that 80 page response, he says that he was arrested by Chula Vista PD outside of their jurisdiction and told that he couldn't see his kids while they serve that warrant. He also claims that his missing wife Maya was aware of his gun collection, more than 17 firearms, and that she approved of it. He claims after intimidating letters and death threats that he needs those guns to protect his family and himself while the search continues for his missing wife. You might also remember Miliete used that 80 page response to take aim at his in-laws, the parents of Maya Miliete, who have been leading search efforts to find Maya. He says that in the media, they've implied and suggested that he is to blame for Maya's disappearance. So all of that part of that 80 page court document that will likely be used, at least in part, in today's gun violence restraining order hearing, that judge will make that decision. The hearing scheduled for 9 a.m. There is also the expectation that there will be people present outside of the courthouse. It is possible that there will be uh, some sort of some sort of small uh, gathering of that hashtag Team Maya group, uh, which has been rallying to find Maya. There are also signs even just down the street here that look relatively new outside of the Hall of Justice that are posted on uh, street lights and uh, traffic signs noting the disappearance of Maya, how she's been missing since January, and how they're still continuing those search efforts. In downtown San Diego, I'm Evan Narani, News 8. Evan, thanks so much for that update. And we are expecting major developments to come to light over a racist incident at Coronado High School. This is what happened over the weekend after a playoff basketball game between Coronado and Orange Glen. Now that's a predominantly Hispanic high school in Escondido. Today, Coronado Unified will hold a special meeting as more community leaders are planning to speak out about what happened. News 8's Chris Groh is live in Coronado with a closer look. Boy, this is getting a lot of attention on social media, online, people. Uh, upset. 
It, it certainly garnered already national attention, and even just here in the community, tensions were already high at the end of this basketball game. It was a close one between Coronado and Orange Glen, and we saw some of those tensions start to rise there after the post-game handshake, sort of what led to this incident, even though some people are pointing out, look, those tortillas were brought to the game, so likely that this was planned in, in some way. At least that is some of the theories. But uh, people in the community, a lot of people on either side of the argument, and this woman taking action, already labeling the actions racist. Take a look. It's racist, it's wrong, and it's, it shouldn't be tolerated. And that's just one of the many people echoing that sentiment, though she is a Coronado resident. We're seeing a lot of people uh, across social media, though, echoing that after seeing, again, those tortillas thrown at the Orange Glen sideline there uh, by what appear to be students, fans. And then there is a port of that video that does appear to show some of those Coronado High School basketball players also throwing those tortillas. Now, what's going to be happening today, Coronado Unified is going to be holding a special board meeting to address what happened. They are going to be taking a close look, but if you look closely at the agenda, you'll see there are three private sessions in this public meeting, one of them to deal with employee discipline and another student discipline. So that could be anything from players, students, and uh, potentially even some of the fans, again, those being students in the crowd, or even some of the coaching staff. Now, it's important to note, Coronado Police Department said that the person who brought the tortillas to the game has been identified as an adult male. However, uh, we did see, again, uh, people of all ages throwing uh, those tortillas. So uh, they did not say that he was that lone actor. Now, the superintendent has uh, come out and promised swift action and has apologized for the behavior. Uh, but some of those players on the Orange Glen team felt it was somewhat of a double whammy, not only losing the game in dramatic fashion, but then having this happen. I hope it like sets an, sets an example of uh, what, you know, how, how not to act and how, and maybe it's like a wake up call for Coronado or, or other schools who are for just to be better. And And look, there's going to be two press conferences later today, one at noon and one at 5 o'clock, one in Coronado and one in Escondido. Eric, or excuse me, Stella Netta. Chris Crow, thanks so much for that update. An independent review into the San Diego Police Department will be at the center of a virtual community forum that's happening today. The Center for Policing Equity released this report last week, and the five-year independent review found racial disparities in arrests, stops, and searches by SDPD. The virtual community forum starts at 530. If you want to RSVP, we do have a link at CBS8.com. Just click on the Help button. Governor Newsom says the state will pay off all past due rent that accumulated in California due to the pandemic. Yeah, California has apparently $5.2 billion to pay off people's rent. The money came from multiple aid packages approved by Congress. The state's ban on evictions is set to expire next Wednesday. It's still unclear if it will be extended. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria has signed his $4.6 billion budget for fiscal year 2020 into law. Gloria says the budget sets the city on a fiscally responsible path to erase the structural budget deficit while investing in neighborhoods, services, and workers. Gloria faced a projected deficit of $124 million after he took office in December. $306 million in federal coronavirus funding helped erase that. The mayor will join us live during the next half hour. We're going to discuss that and how he plans to address uh, you know, affordable housing in our area. So make sure you stick around for that. Good morning. It is 610. If you walk outside right now, it is pretty nice, but yeah. is that heat sticking around? Yeah, we're looking at temperatures to start warmer than yesterday, but then this afternoon it'll be a little bit cooler than yesterday, but that's probably some much needed relief. Our heat, yeah, it's kind of a thing of the past now. Uh, the heat of the weekend, we can say goodbye to that. Temperatures are back to near seasonal. Taking a look at PB right now, you saw those overcast skies. Also watching our satellite radar, some of this just popping up over our deserts. Now it's really hard to tell 
tell if any of this green is hitting the ground. It likely is not. It's just really, really light Virga. That's what evaporates before it gets to ground level. Because as you know, our mountains and deserts are just so extremely dry. Most of any precipitation will not hit the ground. Now here's a look overall at where some of that moisture is coming from. You can see this loop right there over Baja. A little bit of green popping up here as well. Just off the coast too. And a lot of that's just getting swept up to our area. Now it's not going to bring us measurable rainfall. The problem with this is it's a good chance we could see some thunderstorm activity and when we get dry lightning that's a big issue of course when it comes to fires we know all too well especially up in Northern California all the lightning sparks that can start those fires especially when you see how dry it is. This is San Miguel's view each time I look at it we see less and less of that marine layer so a lot of that's already uh, burning off but we do have plenty of high clouds out there relative humidity in the 80s 90s west of the mountains but as you saw the mountains and deserts are very dry temperatures they look like this right now I'll have your full forecast coming up Jenny